In 2013, a fine young man was found dead in his high school basketball gym. Originally, the authorities and everybody involved with this case, they chalked it up and claimed it was an accident. It wasn't quite as simple as that. There was multiple strange things that happened that day and even the days after and years after. As to when I'm speaking, in 2021, this case is still unsolved and nobody knows what truly happened and there's so many unanswered questions. Or is there? You see, most people think the answer is obvious and some people have an idea of what really happened. And well, let's just say this story is beyond crazy and it's one of the most insane things I've ever seen. How does a kid quote unquote accidentally die without anybody knowing what happened during school hours with people present at the time? Was foul play involved? Was there people plotting on this kid's death? And was this on purpose? There's a lot of questions with this unsolved mystery, but it leaves us with the main question today. What really happened to Kendrick Johnson that day? What's good y'all, I hope you're having a blessed day. Before we get into this video, I wanna give a shout out to the person who sent me this story on Instagram. I also want to throw this in there because when I was doing my research for this story and I researched it for multiple days to get everything right, I couldn't believe what I was reading and it made me cringe and my bones literally tingle. I don't think it's that gruesome, I just think for me it made me feel a weird way. I think that's the best way to describe it, so viewer discretion is most definitely advised. And as you all know, we do a lot of basketball stories on this channel and a lot of crazy ones, but this has got to be up there in the top three. What makes this story so intriguing is that roughly 10 years later, we still don't have some answers. For high school basketball stories and basketball stories in general, this has got to be the number one biggest unsolved mystery of all time. Get you a snack, get you a drink, get you a nice meal because this video, it will not disappoint. I think I've hyped it up enough, but it deserves the hype. Without further ado, let's get into the story kendrick johnson this is the main character of this video and from all the information i gathered he was a decent basketball player he wasn't the best basketball player by any means but he was on his team and he was known for being pretty solid johnson lived with his family in georgia and he attended lounge high school which is also in georgia all of his friends and family had nothing but high praise and good words for him they referred to him as a sweet and quiet boy i want you to remember how they referred to him as a quiet boy because that has a little bit of play into something later in this video. I want you to understand that he wasn't a class clown and he didn't act out and he didn't seek attention. He did his own thing and he minded his own business. And some people would even go as too far as you saying that he was shy at some times. I know some of you don't think that's a big deal, but he was a three sport athlete. And most athletes, let's be honest, they're pretty cocky. High school athletes are either cocky or confident, they're not shy. With Kendrick being a three sport athlete, he did play basketball, but his dream was to play football in the NFL. But sadly, on January 11th in 2013, those dreams, they would come to an end. This is when the body of a 17 year old Kendrick Johnson was found in the most unusual and weirdest places I've ever heard of. He wasn't just found dead in his gym, he was upside down and rolled up in a school gym mat. His body was basically rolled up like a burrito in other words. What's even stranger about this is that the mat he was rolled up in, it wasn't on the ground, it was standing straight up, so he'd have to almost jump into it. It was reported that his shoes at the time of death were behind his knees. At first glance, investigators said that they thought and their main theory was that Johnson simply fell into the mat reaching for one of his shoes. As crazy as that sounds, it somewhat added up because when they unrolled the mat at first, his arm was stretched down above his head. So it looked like he was reaching for something, so that's why they thought that at first. His other arm was around his waist and he was just in his socks. A very key note to throw in there that I found interesting is that students from the school told the police that it was common for people to leave their belongings in the mats when they didn't want to pay for a locker. And the mat that Johnson was found dead in, it was six feet tall and he was only roughly five foot 10. Here's where things get a little fishy though. When the mat is rolled up, there's only a 14 inch hole in diameter around the center 
and Johnson's shoulders measured up to be 19 across his chest. When I tell these stories, I try not to go too deep into detail because it's kind of confusing, but I hope all this makes sense. I try to dumb it down as quick and easy as possible. In other terms, the mat was only 14 inches wide and Johnson's body was measured at 19, so it wouldn't make sense that he would fit in there really. Yeah, he could squeeze his way in, but he was at the complete bottom of the mat, so if he got stuck, why would he keep going down? That threw everybody off guard and that was a huge red flag and even his parents stated that there's no way that was possible. The people that found Johnson before anyone called the police were students, but a full day had passed until he had been discovered. That means that people were going in and out of that gym without noticing him for an entire day. Eventually, there was an autopsy on Johnson, which is where they decide what happened to him, and it was said that he suffocated as a result of being stuck upside down or in an enclosed space. And only 24 hours after being found, the investigators ruled his death as an accident. They were claiming that he got stuck in the mat and he couldn't move and blood rushed down to his head and that's how he died. But however, with all that being said, it's not as simple as that and this is where things really start to get fishy. Remember how I told you the only reason he jumped into the mat was to retrieve his lost shoe? Well listen to this. The shoe he was trying to get was on top of blood, which makes sense, but there wasn't any blood on the shoe. That doesn't add up, you see what I'm saying? Because if the blood was dropping down from his head or arm and it was going under the shoe, how did it not get on the shoe? Something's not right, coach. To make things even more interesting, the investigators over the case tested the blood and it was shown that it didn't even belong to him. Since the blood didn't match, they wound up saying that it was probably there for a long time. Which in other terms, they were saying that it was an old blood spot. But that's kind of ironic or iconic it was in the same place as where he died. In the crime scene too, there was also a pair of orange and black gym shoes and they had blood on them. But they didn't take those to get them tested. Once again, another major red flag and caution sign. Why are you not testing all the evidence? His parents from the jump didn't believe this was an accident and they thought foul play was involved. Johnson's parents even went as too far as you saying that their son's body had been moved and it was messed with. There was nothing proven or said about that, but this is one of the biggest questions of the entire mystery. His parents made one of the greatest points out there. If this was an accident, how could have no one heard his call for help in a high school of over 3,000 students? They didn't find his body in the woods or in a house or anywhere that's abandoned and where people don't go. This was in a public place with thousands of kids. And if it was an accident, let's say he jumped in there for a shoe and he couldn't get out. Remember, it doesn't really make sense that he couldn't get out of a mat and he's a three sport athlete if you think about it. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say he jumped into the mat and he couldn't get out. Surely he would be screaming for help. And if he was screaming for that said help, somebody would surely go over to him. Obviously though, he wasn't screaming for help, so that's why everybody thinks there's so much more to this story. His parents would even add more fuel to the fire and they said his case wasn't being taken seriously because of his race. One key note that everybody brings up in this entire discussion is that Kendrick Johnson was a black man and the entire investigator crew were all white. And in 2013, it was said that there was racism involved in Georgia at the time, or at least in the area he was in. To make things even worse, the attorney of the family said that if he was white, the case would have been handled differently. I don't want to speak on that too much, but I did think that was interesting and it was worthy of throwing in the video. As things sort of started to die down, not a lot, but they got a lot less crazier, his family would eventually have the funeral. But after his funeral, things got back up to being crazy. His mom took a picture of their son at the funeral home, and in the photo, Kendrick's face looked extremely swollen and it didn't look quote unquote human. It was said that the public and all of social media was horrified by the photo and they wanted more about the truth. If you didn't think this story could get even more unreal, you're in for a ride. Shortly after the funeral, on May 8th in 2013, a judge granted Kendrick Johnson's body to be exhumed. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know what that meant, but I looked it up and it means they are going to, and they did, dig up his body. The reason they were going to dig up his body was to have another private person person to do a second autopsy. And this time, the new autopsy revealed more answers. 
It was reported that he suffered damage to the right side of his neck, which meant that he likely died from blunt force trauma, which in other terms mean he forcefully got hit. And when it was all said and done for the autopsy, they concluded his death was not an accident. Hold on though, it got even weirder because the new autopsy revealed that some of his organs were missing and his body had been stuffed with newspaper. It got so serious that the GBI got involved, which is the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. The only thing they even stated and claim is that the body was sent to the funeral home after the first autopsy. They said his organs had been put back inside the body, however the organs were not sent to the funeral home because they were too decomposed and instead were disposed. The funeral home came out with their own statement and they said the body they received it didn't have any organs so they replaced it. This was said to not be that big of a deal because this was common practice when you're burying a body. I don't know too much or really anything about that so I'm not gonna speak on that situation. Kendrick Johnson's family was pretty upset by this though and they tried to sue the funeral home for mishandling their son's body but to make a long story short they lost. His family was trying to say it was a cover up but most people thought that was ludicrous. Regardless of the situation, at the end of the day the organs were lost so you couldn't test them in the second autopsy so Therefore, that rose even more red flags. Of course, the family's gonna be mad and they're trying to do everything they could, but then out of nowhere, CNN got involved. And this was a very interesting part to the story because they wound up gaining access to the school security footage of the day Kendrick Johnson was killed. I wish I could say this was a big factor and it solved everything, but sadly, after viewing the footage, they realized that it didn't offer any information. I do think this is a very valuable part and piece of the story though. The cameras that were facing the mats that he was in and died in, they were unfocused and they skipped all around and they were messed up. You gotta keep in mind that this was in 2013. Now schools have way better security footage. According to CNN themselves, all that could even be seen from the cameras was that Kendrick Johnson was walking towards the gym and there was footage of him jogging. He was never even shown within or leaving the gym and he didn't show up for his next class. But what they did find is that there was a whole hour of footage from the gym that was missing. Not too big of a deal, right? But the footage that was missing was during the time where he would have quote unquote accidentally died. So yeah, you can do what you want with that information, but this made the story get brought back up once again. It seems like the farther we go in this story, the more I believe and maybe even some of you believe that this wasn't an accident and foul play was involved. And well, let's get into it. In 2014, his parents filed a wrongful death suit against the school's official, alleging that Johnson had been harassed by a white student. There was even an article released that stated Johnson was beaten by the hands of two white brothers. The same article didn't include any names, but the description of the brothers closely resembled Brian and Brandon Bell. I have no idea who these two guys are, but there was also claims that the reason these two guys apparently did it was because they had beef and they even fought him earlier that year. That information blew up very quickly because obviously it's an unsolved mystery. Anytime you have a lead on some suspects, it's gonna gain a lot of attention. Shortly after this article was released, the Johnson family accused the brother's father, an FBI agent at the time, of covering up the murder. Now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta pump the brakes. I'm not siding with anyone on this story, I'm just telling you what happened. With that being said, we cannot skip past the fact of what I just said. Kendrick got in a fight with two brothers and he had beef with them, so people think those brothers are the one who did this to him. And ironically enough, their father is an FBI agent. Who could cover up a murder or whatever you want to call it better than an FBI agent at the time? I've probably said it a hundred times, I'm gonna say it again. This has gotta be one of the craziest stories I've ever done. It was also said that this FBI agent, which was the father of the kids who some people think murdered, you know, Kendra Johnson, they think he manipulated the school. Flash forward in time a little farther, in 2015, the Johnsons, which is the family, 
filed a $100 million civil lawsuit against 38 people. This list of 38 people included three of their son's classmates, the school, the local crime lab, state and federal officials, and five agents of the GBI and an FBI agent, and more. I don't know if I've ever seen a $100 million civil lawsuit against 38 people. That's unreal. Taking things even farther, these parents also said that the sons of the FBI agent who killed Johnson used their connections to cover up the investigation, which makes sense. I don't know about you, and I can't speak for you, but I'm a big and firm believer in innocent till proven guilty. It doesn't seem right to me that you can make accusations without evidence to back it up and expect those people to be thrown in jail. You gotta look at it from both standpoints. How would you feel if someone randomly accused you of something you didn't do and people wanted you to go to jail? It wouldn't be right because you gotta have the evidence. I'm saying that because it leads us perfectly into our next topic. This family made all these accusations, they filed a $100 million lawsuit and did all this stuff, and that's fine and damn but you gotta have the evidence. And whether it did happen or didn't, they admitted that they didn't have any hard evidence to back up any of these claims they were making. So instead of them making a hundred million dollars from this lawsuit, I guess they thought they were gonna win, they, the family, was sued for more than $850,000 in attorney fees. Then, they were also sued $1 million in defamation charges. And ultimately, to sum this all up, the judge asked them to pay $300,000 more of lawyer fees to close everything. Yeah, I think we can all agree, that backfired on them, and I sort of feel bad, but you can't make claims like that. Whether they are in the right or wrong, think about it guys, they were planning on suing 38 people. Anyways, let's move it on because this has been a long video and we still have a little bit more to go. Flash forward in time to June of 2016, more information was released. The Department of Justice announced that no charges would be filed against anyone in relation to Kendrick Johnson's death considering there was insignificant evidence to support federal criminal charges. And last but not least, as far as the feds were concerned, the case was officially and finally closed. But, according to an article, the Johnson's parents would still not give up. Hey, wait a second. You right there, you thought you was about to click off this video because it's over? It's never over. We still got more to go. In June of 2018, Kendrick Johnson's body was exhumed, which means they dug it back up for a second time and a third autopsy was performed. I know some people, or maybe many people, are big on being respectful to the dead. Imagine somebody digging up one of your family members' bodies two times. Not once, but twice. Sort of disrespectful. Maybe that's just me. You know, the first time it made sense because they were going to find out some answers, but the second time, I don't know. But more information did come out of this, and they found in the second autopsy that his death was not an accident once again, but they already knew that. It was said that this quote-unquote blunt force trauma was likely due to being quote-unquote struck in the neck with a 45 pound dumbbell, which does add up and make sense because you do have workout equipment at a high school. The parents were hoping out of the third autopsy this would be enough to convince the justice system to reopen the case. People were also stating that they should reopen the case because remember, they lost surveillance footage that was valuable to the case. And guess what? Three years later, it appeared that their answers led to what they wanted. In March of 2021, which is the current year, authorities reopened their investigation and it's currently ongoing. According to a Lowndes County Sheriff, here's what he said. If there's questions and they're legitimate, I need another answers myself. The only way I'm going to know is to look at the evidence myself. According to the sheriff himself, it's been reported that they've seen a ton of new evidence that they think is valuable. They also believe they have enough evidence to solve this mystery once for all and maybe put somebody behind bars. The only downside to this is that they think the investigation is going to take up to six months, but they're optimistic it will be served. Or not, it will be served, but justice will be served. Here's what Kendra Johnson's mother had to say. It's been eight long years. I'm feeling hopeful. And that is the up to date on one of the biggest unsolved basketball mysteries ever. It's really surreal to think about that it's been almost 10 years and we don't have a legit answer, but 
I do feel like we're getting close. And I know some of you in the comment section, you're gonna have an idea of what you think happened, so I'm curious. Drop your comments down below. I know a lot of you are curious about what I think about all this, and I try to be careful when I tell these stories because I don't wanna take any person's side. I do like to give my opinion here and there, and I'll leave you with this. I don't think it was an accident, and that's all I'm gonna say. As to what really happened, I can't make an opinion and statement without knowing enough information, and I feel like we still don't know enough. Do we have leads and ideas of what maybe we think happened? Yes, but we can't go off of a maybe. You can't do that, it's not right. Well, I'm not gonna do it. I know you guys will. This has been one of the longest videos I've ever done on my channel. It took a lot of research and a lot of days to make, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you're new to the channel and you like stuff like this, hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section, but with all that being said, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you boys and girls enjoyed. Hope you learned something. If you know the channel, what are you doing? I appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. If not, that's cool, but hey man, as always, let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Peace.